This is ABTV, Animal Bites Television. Ball pythons have really been responsible for some of the biggest growth in the reptile hobby over the last 20 years. And although they're much more common, the fact is, is now prices are much more affordable for people to get into them, which I think is a pretty good positive for the average person. Take, for example, these banana ball pythons. These are unbelievable co-dominant animals. And there's one of the most gorgeous of all the ball pythons, in my opinion. And now, they're relatively affordable, typically under $300. So such a beautiful snake like this is completely affordable. And they're really interesting when you start getting into other mutations. Take a look at this beauty here. This happens to be a lemon blast banana. Man, that thing is gorgeous. So basically, it's a pastel, it's a pinstripe, and it's a banana ball python, a three gene animal that is absolutely breathtaking. And probably one of my favorite of all of the banana projects are the cinnamon and black pastel. And I'm gonna show you a black pastel one a little later, but take a look at this cinnamon right here. Just that orange and purpley look to it just makes it unbelievably perfect so today i'm going to update you guys on just a bunch of really cool ball pythons that i hatched out this year i hope you guys will enjoy it it's going to be a fun show my name is brian bartrett i'm no zoologist just a guy with a passion for animals and that passion often takes me on animal adventures around the world this week i'm at bhb reptiles for the 400th episode of snake bites tv you're watching Snake Bites. So what's made ball pythons so popular over the last 15 to 18 years? There's really a bunch of attributes. The fact that they're born relatively large. This is only a few week old ball python, so you don't have to worry about a really little tiny snake. For a first time snake owner, they don't move a whole lot. So someone that's a little bit apprehensive about handling a snake, it's really easy to handle. And of course, they get pretty big size, but not so big that it's too big for most people. And of course, the thing that's really just jaunted them into explosion is the polymorphism, or all the interesting paint jobs that are out there. This happens to be a super pastel fire ball python. So essentially, the pastel is a codominant mutation. This is the super form, and the fire is a codominant mutation as well. And when you breed fire to fire, you get a solid white snake, which is really cool. The super flies are really interesting. And what's neat about the fires is that as they get older, they typically get even more beautiful, which is kind of neat. And this is another fire mutation here, but this is actually a super blast fire. Now the Super Blast is a Super Pastel, much like the last snake we just looked at, but it has pinstripe in it, and of course it has the fire. And oh my gosh, that thing is absolutely on fire. And again, you know, going back to the fire gene, is that that's going to get even prettier the bigger it gets. It's kind of an enhancing gene. And of course, if you bred that to another fire, you could get white snakes, which I don't know that you'd really want to do in that particular case. But this is another really neat ball python here that we hatched out. This happens to be a leopard spinner ball python. Now, the leopard gene is kind of a co-dominant dominant gene that is linked to piebaldism. So all leopards are het for pied. At least I believe that's the case. I know there's still some people that are not 100% sure. But the fact is all the leopards I bred have actually been had for pied. But it really whacks out the pattern a whole lot. And again, when you breed a leopard to a normal, about half the babies come out with that wacky pattern. This happens to also be a spinner, which is a spider and a pinstripe, both dominant or incomplete dominant mutations. And it just has that really cool kind of dot dash look to it. So I love the leopards uh, when you breed them into spider. And the other animal that I love when you breed them into is actually lesser. And this happens to be a combination of the leopard and the lesser and the spider and the pinstripe. So this is actually a leopard lesser spinner. So it's got all four genes in it. And it just looks very similar to that last one, which was the leopard spinner, but it adds the lesser gene which gives it that kind of really brown look. For whatever reason, my personal opinion is the coolest animals are leopard with either lesser or spider. But I tell you what, making animals like this, you just put one or two more things like pastel or enchi into it, holy cow, now that's gonna be a cool snake. 
You know, there's so many ball pythons to show you. Both sides of these aisles are baby ball pythons, but I don't want to make this show an hour long, so I'm just going to try my best to pick a handful of kind of my favorites of what I hatched out, and uh, eventually maybe I'll revisit this at some point, but I don't want to overload you guys with ball pythons either. It's always funny because some people are like, oh, I want to see more ball pythons in your show. Other people are like, oh, I'm sick of ball pythons. The fact is I've always loved ball pythons, so I surround myself by a lot of them, so I won't overload you guys, but there's some really Really cool stuff. This is a relatively simple one. We'll kind of stick with that fire enhancing gene that I talked about before. This is just a fire champagne. Now the champagne is actually a co-dominant mutation, but unfortunately the super version is a lethal gene, so you can't actually get a super uh, champagne that lives. You know, sometimes they'll hatch out, but they're, they kind of corkscrew and eventually um, they don't make it, so unfortunately. So I don't personally breed champagne to champagne because I don't want to produce that lethal animal. But when you breed it to a fire, it just kind of brightens it up a little bit. And again, this is like the building blocks for future generations, like maybe into pastel or enchi or who knows the case. But uh, you know, again, that fire gene is a real enhancer. This happens to be a fire spinner blast. So the fire gene again, but this one has pastel, pinstripe and spider on top of it. It just makes it really beautiful. And again, some of the spinner blasts are really beautiful as babies, but when they get older, they dirty up just a little bit. So that fire gene keeps them really beautiful and enhanced. So this guy's gonna be really cool when it's a thousand grams or, or basically an adult. Uh, this is another kind of just a little bit of a, a spin on that what we just saw, It'd be the fire spinner blast, but it has one more gene in it, which is the lesser gene. So this is actually a fire lesser spinner blast. Now the lesser gene is another co-dominant mutation. When you breed two lessers together, you'll get blue-eyed leucistics. Unlike the fire gene that you get black-eyed leucistics. So again, with ball pythons, there's so much complication. It's kind of hard and I'm not going to blow you away. I'm just going to show you some really beautiful snakes. So that's it. That's a beautiful animal right there. Let's move on to another kind of enhancing gene that I really love, and that's the Enchi gene. Now an Enchi is a co-dominant mutation again, so you can get a super Enchi that's just kind of a really beautiful snake. And it gives it kind of that nice, clean, but more coppery look, a little bit brighter on the yellows, so I really like it. This actually happens to be an Enchi Mojave Spinner. So again, it's got the Enchi, it's got the Mojave, which is another blue-eyed leucistic maker, and then it's got the spider and the pinstripe in it. And just those four genes together, well, I tell you what, that thing is gorgeous. And this is the first one I've produced of those personally. I've seen them a couple times, so I can't wait to see that as an adult. And that'll probably be a keeper, to be honest with you. And sticking with the Enchi gene again, and I really love what Enchi does to bananas in particular. This happens to be an Enchi pinstripe banana ball python. And that Enchi gene and banana gene or coral glow gene mixed together, oh my god, they just get so beautiful when they get bigger. And this happens to be a three gene animal and uh, i tell you it's endless and that is a gorgeous snake. I showed you the cinnamon pastel banana earlier and this is the black pastel version. Now cinny and black pastel are very similar genes. As a matter of fact, when you breed either a cinny to cinny or a black pastel to black pastel or together, you'll get basically what is an all black or kind of a dark brown snake. So they're actually kind of compatible. They're on the same allele basically what it is, but they are very different. A cinny looks a lot different than a black pastel. And when you breed them into banana, they look a little different too. And that is just one sick animal right there. I'm not really sure sure which one I like better, the cinnamon or the black pastel banana. Both of them are crazy cool, but um, regards, every time I look at those things, I just keep thinking like a purple ball python. What better animal could that possibly be? Check this one out here, right here. This is actually a Mojave bumblebee calico. Okay, so it's got the pastel in the spider that makes the bumblebee. It's got the Mojave we talked about that is a blue-eyed leucistic maker. And then we've got the calico, which is basically another incomplete dominant mutation that just brings a lot of white into the sides. And, and when you get into this, you don't see as much white. When you sometimes breed it to a normal or a pastel, the whole side turns white, which is really beautiful. But this is just a great combination. And one of the things that the calico does, even if the white isn't coming up, it kind of disperses all the patterns on the side so all of those saddles and alien heads don't go all the way down and kind of blow out. That just makes for one really cool snake. And kind of in that same bloodline, this is actually a Mojave bumblebee, but it's got a yellow belly gene on it. Now the yellow belly is another co-dominant gene that ironically enough when bred together produces a white snake, but this one's called an ivory instead of a blue eye or black eyed leucistic. And as you can see, this guy is a little bit feisty for sure. Well, it's really going into shed, so that's making it even more difficult. And what happens when those snakes go 
go in the shed, they have this milky secretion that comes together between those outer and inner layers of skin and it makes it hard for them to see for a couple days. So obviously anything that's going on, they're freaked out, right? So I'm gonna put this guy back so I don't freak it out anymore, but that's a beautiful snake. And guys, I'm gonna take a real quick break. On the other side of this break, I've got a really cool animal to show you. This is the snake I couldn't wait to show you guys. I mean, I tell you, I just love this kind of soft look of this animal. And you know, I've always said that I like darker animals, I like lighter animals, I kind of like them all, but this particular animal when it hatched, I was just really blown away. This is actually a super pastel, lesser spider pinstripe. So it kind of has a bunch of different things going on it. And we actually showed you the animal earlier that was basically a pastel lesser spider pinstripe. This is the super pastel version of that. So it certainly has a lot of genes going on, but for whatever reason, you put those genes together and it just comes up with this really faint kind of ghostly looking animal. And uh, man, I'm just so happy. I can't wait to see what this thing looks like when it's again an adult. It's going to be really gorgeous. But uh, just one of the mini gems that we hatch and I just love the hatching season. Uh, this is an interesting animal here and it's not anything that's really new but every time I have one of these I really love them. This is what they call a puma ball python. Now I'll talk a little bit about this complex for you really quickly. The puma is a basically an allelic animal which basically means that you can't really breed a puma to a normal and ever get a puma. You're gonna get yellow bellies because it's half yellow belly and half what they call spark. So when you breed a spark to a yellow belly, you're going to get a puma one in four. Now typically when you have like a double co-dominant animal, which essentially a yellow belly and a spark is, because if you breed a yellow belly to yellow belly, you're going to get an ivory. And when you breed a spark to a spark, you're going to get a super spark. But when you breed them together, you get the puma, but you can't get the puma like a normal double co-dominant like a bumblebee let's say where you breed a bumblebee to a normal and you're gonna get you know a bumblebee one in four these guys are allelic and I know that sounds a little weird but the only way to get a puma is to have both spark and yellow belly expressed in the exact same gene but there's one other mutation that has that same kind of complex thing going on with that and that's actually a super stripe and there's actually highway ball pythons and a few other ball pythons that are the same kind of complex much like the black pastel and the cinnamon pastel we were talking about earlier they're kind of the same type of gene this happens to be what they call a yellow belly and a specter and it works exactly like the yellow belly and spark producing the puma but in this case you produce the super stripe and the super stripe was the very first animal that was produced that was basically allelic like crystal ball pythons are another example example of an allelic animal and there's several others as well but the super stripe was the very first one and actually my buddy Amir was the first one to ever produce them and uh, man I tell you what they were really cool but what's interesting is just like I was talking about with the puma when you breed spark to spark you'll get a super spark well when you breed a specter to specter you get what's called a super specter which looks an awful lot like a super stripe but it's not got any yellow belly in it whatsoever so basically when you breed this to anything you're gonna get a 100% specters. Now, the way you would really capitalize on this would be breeding a super specter to a super yellow belly or an ivory ball python. And then every baby is going to be ivory and every baby is going to be specter. And since every baby is going to be a super stripe and you can do the same thing with pumas or gravels or highways or whatever you might want to do. So that is a super specter. It's pretty darn cool. So I was talking to you guys earlier about the yellow belly to yellow belly that produces the ivory. I kind of wanted to give you an example of what that looks like. And again, there's a lot of white snake type stuff. We talked about the Mojave and Lesser with the blue eyed leucistic and the fire to fire with the black eyed leucistic. Well, this is the ivory or the yellow belly to yellow belly. Now it does have the black eyes, but it also has a little bit of the arrowhead on top of the head, which some of the other mutations don't have. And the only difference between an ivory and this animal is this is actually a black pastel ivory, which makes just a little bit different color to it to be honest with you and the neat thing about white snakes when you're looking to see if there's another mutation is you can put them under a black light and when you look under that black light you'll see a faint patterning and then you can actually determine if there's more to it than just yellow belly to yellow belly or whatever and in this case it was a black pastel so pretty cool huh it's a neat little trick if you ever have a white snake 
to look at it under a black light to see if there's anything else going on. And speaking of a kind of interesting snake, this is actually a Super Pastel GHI. Now the GHI is actually a co-dominant mutation, so there is a Super GHI, and it's an animal that just kind of makes things really busy, brings a little more melanin to it, and this is of course a Super Pastel version of the GHI, and I just love that kind of super busyness that's going on there. It just makes for a really cool snake. Another really cool GHI mutation that we had this year was this guy here, and this is just actually a GHI yellow belly. So again, we were just showing you the ivory, which is a yellow belly gene. This is a GHI version of the yellow belly gene, and it's a feisty little bugger too, isn't it? But look at how cool that side pattern is. You mix that GHI and the yellow belly, you get all these wacky kind of crazy patterns and real chocolatey looking. I just really like it, to be totally honest with you. I think it's really cool. And speaking of chocolates, actually, there's a, let's see here, right over here, check this out. This is actually a chocolate spinner blast. So the chocolate gene is a co-dominant mutation so when you breed it together, you will get a super chocolate ball python. And of course, this is the spinner blast, which we told you earlier, the spinner blast would be a pastel spider in a pinstripe. So this is just a four gene animal. And uh, the chocolate gene is a little bit similar to the GHI in the fact that it makes everything kind of darker. We'll mess up the pattern a little bit. In this case, it kind of dirties it up a little bit, but I still think it's really cool. So I'm not complaining that's a little bit more dirty, but I still think it's pretty cool. And uh, lastly, I'm gonna show you another spinner blast mutation, but this one actually has the calico. Remember we talked about the calico gene earlier? So this gives a good example of what a calico can do. See all the white in the sides here? Now spinner blasts will sometimes have some white in the side, but when you breed them into calico you see a much uh, more of an increase of that. And that's basically what you see with this animal. So again, this is a, a pastel, a spider, a pinstripe, and a calico, so a four gene animal. As you can see, I could spend all day talking about ball pythons and continue to show you all the cool stuff that we hatch. I tell you, I didn't want to make this show an hour long, so we tried to keep it calm and keep it down. But I, you know, every now and then you hear people bashing on ball pythons, saying they're pet rocks or that there's too many of them out there. And, and you know, I understand how people can feel that way. But the truth is, ball pythons are one of the best animals that I can think I've ever worked with. And the polymorphism and paint jobs that they have are unbelievably stunning. And no matter what the market ever ends up doing, I'm gonna always love ball pythons because I think they're just that cool. And as always, guys, whether it's the show or breeding or hatching snakes, I'm always Facebooking and Instagram my way through it. So make sure to follow me over at Snake Bites TV and on Instagram at snakebites.tv. Until next week, you've been watching Snake Bites. Hi, I'm Peter Birch, an Aussie bloke who loves wildlife. My respect for nature started when I was a young boy in rural New South Wales. Since then, it's exploded into an obsession. New episodes every Thursday, only on Animal Bites TV.